All right. Okay, so let's start with uh, chapter one, issue organization. So are you ready? Yes, madam. Okay, all right. <coughs> so sorry, eh, muka Mida nampak gelap sikit sebab tak tahulah lighting kat rumah ni. Okay, so chapter one is about issue organization. All right. So what is... Uh, what are the LO related to this chapter are the first one is to describe the body plans of uh, mammals okay number two to define tissue organ and also organ system with examples and the most important thing is this LO to describe characteristic of different tissue right uh, functions and also location so this is the key point for chapter one right the key point of chapter one is for you to know the characteristic of each uh, tissue their function and also location right uh, so that is all matters in this chapter okay right next Okay, so uh, organi uh, organization of animal body plan. So our body is supported by endoskeleton. So remember, uh, different animals do have different body architectures. Some animal supported by endoskeleton, like like um, uh, even our uh, we ourselves also supported by endoskeleton. Some animals is supported by exoskeleton, and some other animal is supported by hydrostatic skeleton. All right. So we have just need to focus on endoskeleton. So endoskeleton is jointed bones that grow as the body grows. Example, the skull that protecting the brain and vertebral column that protecting the spinal cord. Okay. And the level of organization in animal vertebral body are Started or comprises of cells, right, which make up tissues. And from tissue, it built the organs, and from organ, it uh, form the organ system. Okay, so what is tissue? Anyone? What is the definition of tissue? with a similar appearance and a common function. Yes, very good, Noreen. Okay, so tissue is a group of same cells that have similar structure and also have with specific fun function. So that is tissue, right? So <clears throat> when we talk about epithelial cell, for example, epithelial cell will form epithelial tissue. Muscle cell will form muscle tissue and so on okay so from tissue it will form organs organs is group of different tissues or combination of different tissues that will uh, come up with a, a specific function okay right so that is tissue okay different tissue have different structure suited to their function so these are four main category of tissue that we are going to learn epithelial tissue connective tissue bahasa melayu tissue penghubung muscle tissue and also nerve tissue. So these are four tissues that we are going to explore later on. We are going to start with epithelial tissue, okay? Okay, organ and organ system. In all but simplest animal, tissues are organized into organ. So in other words, this statement state, uh, mentioned that simplest animal, or simplest organism basically just composed of specialized cells saja, okay? Or maybe just uh, one layer of tissue, which not going to form organ, right? Example, I'm giving you an example, sponges. SpongeBob, SpongeBob square pen, right? Uh, SpongeBob are sponges. Sponges are simplest animal where their body are just composed of cells, okay? Not tissue. Nampak tak? Dia sampai tahap cells saja. Dia tak ada pun terbentuk tissue langsung. 
So nanti kita belajar uh, about sponges in chapter biodiversity. Okay, right. So but some other complex organism they compose of um, tissue and then some of them more complex. They have organs and systems and whatnot. Okay, right. Some uh, tissues are arranged in layers in some organ. All right. Uh, in, in some organ, the tissue will be in layer and some other part of the organ, it will just compose of one layer sahaja. And what is organ? Organ is body structure that composed of several different tissues, several different tissues that form a structural and functional unit. Okay, so that is definition of organ. Example of organ is heart. So heart is an example of organ that are built from the combination of different tissues like muscle tissue, connective tissues, epithelial tissues, and also nervous tissue, right? So different tissues, group of different tissues with a structural form and also um, similar function, okay? Okay, and what about organ system? So organ system is a group of organ, group of organ that function together to carry out major activities of body. Okay, example, digestive system. So digestive system, okay, built from the combination of different organs like uh, digestive tract, okay, salur pencernaan, the liver, the gallbladder, okay, uh, the pancreas and uh, others. So these are example of uh, an organ system that is built from a group of organs. Okay. Okay. So then we are going to start with the first type of tissue, which is epithelial tissue. So again and again, untuk semua jenis tissue, what you need to know is characteristic, the function, and also location. So these are three things that you have to. Um, um, understand and memorize. <clears throat> okay, so epithelial tissue derived from the three germ layers. What is three germ layers? So in simple word, I would say the germ layers is basic. Basic layer of tissue that is developed during embryonic development. Okay, maksudnya in the eight weeks to 12 weeks of pregnancy, uh, so these uh, three gem layers uh, started to form, right? The three gem layers are ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. So germ layers maksudnya basic tissue, tissue yang uh, tissue asas, right? So from these germ layers, it will form many, many other kind of tissues. For example, ectoderm layer. So ectoderm, ecto maksudnya the outermost layer. Lapisan yang paling luas sekali. So this ectoderm layer will form, one of it is epidermis. Epidermis of skin, kulit kita ni semua terbentuk daripada ectoderm layer. So a part of ectoderm layer, eh, sorry, a part of epidermis, ectoderm layer also involved in the development of our central nervous system. Otak, semua ni terbentuk daripada ectoderm layer. Alright, okay. Second one is endoderm layer. Endoderm, endo means the innermost layer. Lapisan paling dalam. Right, so the endoderm layer will form inner lining of the uh, digestive tract. Maksudnya, lapisan dalam of our digestive tract. Salur pencernaan. Contoh, uh, kita punya lapisan dalam usus. Itu terbentuk daripada endoderm layer. Okay, right. And next one, mesoderm layer. Mesoderm M. Remember, middle. So, mesoderm layer form the inner lining of the blood vessel. Lapisan dalam of the blood vessel that we call as endothelium. All right. So a part of um, uh, developing this uh, apa nama endothelium, 
the mesoderm layer also will be differentiate into muscle. Ni contoh lah, mana bagi contoh. Detail kita belajar chapter 9 nanti. Okay, uh, so you can see that from these germ layers, it will develop into or differentiate into different kinds of tissues. Alright, okay. Alright, so next, uh, epithelial tissue occur in sheet of tightly packed cell. So the cell are very tight together and they are connected by the tight junction. All right. So the epithelial tissue covers outside of the body, lining of the organs or cavity within the body. All right. Okay. Okay, the cells are closely packed with tight junction and thus there are very little intercellular spaces. Okay, so you just imagine this is the base. Cell at the base will be attached to the basement membrane. So this is basement membrane and these are all the cell that is attached to the basement membrane and you can see they are closely packed together and they are connected by the tight junction. Okay, all right. So the basement membrane is a dense mat of extracellular matrix that compose of collagen fiber. So more cell are can attach kepada basement membrane. And the free surface of epithelium will be either exposed to air or exposed to fluid. So the free surface refers to kawasan yang belah atas ni lah, yang terdedah ni. Kawasan yang terdedah ni uh, may be uh, exposed to air or exposed to fluid depending on the location of that particular uh, epithelial uh, tissue. Okay, so far, can you follow? Yes, madam. Okay. Yes, madam. Thanks. Okay, so some epithelial tissue may be modified into glands. Okay, kepada kelenjar. Right, that's the function is mainly involving with secretion. Okay, cell can regenerate and constantly replace the epithelial cell basically can regenerate and replace for example epidermis of our skin for example will be replaced every two weeks and epithelial in the lining of stomach will be replaced every two to three days because it is exposed to very acidic condition so of course the lining will be tear off and they can worn off tear off so it will be replaced uh, within two to three days okay and as for liver liver is a gland form uh, from epithelial uh, epithelium cell that can regenerate after a portion of it surgically removed but it depends on how large is your liver um, uh, were removed lah right uh, so kalau kecil biasanya uh, lagi cepat lah dia regenerate balik and that's why Tak ada masalah if let's say we want to donate our liver because the liver is regenerated, okay? Okay, next is, right? Okay, the detail about epithelial tissue. So epithelial are classified based on, okay, now you have a, Okay, let's say epithelial cell is classified first is based on the number of layer. Second one, it is classified based on shape. Okay, so for layer, some epithelial cell having only one layer. Okay, and some of them is having more than one layers. Okay, so for epithelial cell or epithelial tissue that compose of only one layer, we call as simple epithelial or simple epithelium that compose of single layer of cells. And those that have more than one layers, we call as stratified epithelium. Okay, stratified means they compose of multiple tiers of cell, bertingkat-tingkat, berlapis-lapis. That is stratified epithelial. And uh, number three is uh, pseudo stratified epithelial. Okay, pseudo means here, pseudo means false, right? 
So pseudostratified epithelium is actually a single layer of cell but appear to be stratified. Sebenarnya di satu layer sahaja. So in other words, dia duduk bawah ni. In this classification, one layer. But then it appear like having multiple tiers. Kita nampak macam berlapis-lapis. Tapi sebenarnya dia hanya satu lapis lah sahaja. Kenapa? Because the cells vary in length. Cell tak sama pan, tak sama panjang. Alright, so later we will see. Okay, so that is the first classification of epithelial tissue based on layering. Okay, so ada dua, stratified or simple. Okay. Okay, number two is based on classification of shape. Right, on the free surface. Kenapa maksudnya uh, shape on the free surface? Remember, stratified means cells that have more than one layers. So, ini layer yang pertama, for example. Right? So, ini layer yang kedua. Ini layer yang kedua. Ha, contohlah, macam tu. Right? So, nak tentukan what kind of shape is the cell or is the tissue is, you have to refer on the shape on the exposed or the free surface. Kita kena tengok bentuk yang bahagian dekat paling up atas. Kalau bentuk yang paling atas tu nipis, maka kita panggil dia squam squamous. Ha, macam itulah. Alright. So, there are three different type of shape. Okay. Cuboidal, dice-like structure. Bentuk macam dadu. Alright. Next is columna, brick-like structure. Alright. Next one is squamous. Thin flat like floor tiles structure and all cell remember is attached to the basement membrane all right okay so this is the two way of classification uh, about the epithelial cell okay so as such we have this picture which you can refer to textbook so we have here simple and we have here stratified. Okay. So we have simple squamous epithelial tissue. Simple because of the layering. You can see it is having one layer. Okay. Squamous is because of the shape. So simple squamous epithelial tissue. And this one is stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Because you can see the shape on the free surface is um, squamous or flat, okay? And we do also have here simple cuboidal epithelial tissue and stratified cuboidal epithelial tissue. We have simple columna and stratified columna epithelial tissue, all right? And this is what we call as the pseudo stratified columna epithelial tissue. The shape of cell is a long, but it has different uh, or different length or height. That's why you can see that it seems like having multiple layers. Okay, right, so to. Okay, one more thing. Lupa mana nak cakap. Bio is um, incur a lot of uh, imagination. So pictures must be here. Kalau kita sebut stratified columna, you have to know what, how, what is the shape of stratified columna. Okay, stratified squamous. You have to know what is the shape or how it looks like. So, gambar-gambar, image-image, semua kena ada kat sini. Okay, All right. So, this is a, a summary of a table, table summary of uh, apa nama, epithelial tissue. So, we have simple and we have stratified. So, we have cuboidal, sorry, squamous, cuboidal or columna. And you can see down here, pseudo stratified is classified under simple epithelial and we have another one okay type of epithelial which is transitional epithelial tissue transitional is for a group under stratified so what is transitional right so kita discuss kejap lagi okay now let's start with the detail of each Right, so we start with simple squamous epithelial tissue. Remember, simple is because of the one layer. Squamous is 
by looking at the shape, right? So this is simple squamous epithelial tissue. You can see it just composed of one layer of cell that attached to the basement membrane. So this is the basement membrane and this is each cell, right? You can see that it has central disc nucleus. Okay, nucleus duduk dekat tengah-tengah. The shape of cell is very flat and it has tessellated margin. Tessellated means irregular. Why the margin is regular? You can see that the shape of cell are not um, similar. Nampak tak? Bentuk cell tak sama. So that's why the, tessel, the margin is tessellated. Okay? Right. Okay, so the detail about simple squamous epithelium. So you can see is it is a just a single layer of platen cell, right? And with this shape central nuclei, okay? Uh, nuclei bentuk this, agak lepe sikit and duduk di tengah-tengah cell. Okay, this shape means they agak a little bit leper, okay? Right, and the margin is tessellated. And uh, one cell is connected or bound to another cell by tight junction. Okay, so since the cell is very thin, bentuk cell tu nipis, so function dia adalah bagus untuk diffusion. So this is what relates or how it can relate, the shape can relate to the uh, function. So the first function is to allow diffusion of Gases, for example, gases and also nutrient. That is the first function. So, location. Where does can we found the uh, simple squamous epithelial tissue? We can found in the air sac of lung. Air sac here refers to the alveolus. Okay. Number two, it can be found in the Bowman's capsule of the kidney, right? And number three, in the heart and also blood vessel. Okay, so the first function is to assist uh, diffusion. Example, diffusion of nutrient and also gas. Number two, function. Since it is very flat, so of course, bila nipis, dia akan mengurangkan geser, geseran, reduce friction. So, and this is very good to allow free passage ataupun uh, friction-free passage of fluids. For example, in the heart chamber. Okay, uh, so it will reduce friction for the blood to flow in the blood vessels and also in the heart chamber. Okay, so that is the function of simple squamous epithelial tissue. Okay, okay if you have question, please chip in. Eh? Tanya je. Kalau rasa malu nak buka mic, type dekat chat box. Okay, right, next. Simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. Okay, again, simple is because of the layer. Cuboidal because of the shape. So you can see it is a dice-like structure over here. And the cell is attached to the basement membrane. Okay. And this is a cross-section of a kidney, right? Where you can see this is the kidney tubule, the basement membrane of the kidney tubule. And this is one cell. This is another cell. And look at the nucleus over here. And here is the free surface. As we talk about kidney, so the free surface is exposed to air or fluid. Fluid. Ah, fluid. fluid. Ah, okay. So dalam buah pinggang kita kan, so benda lain yang cecair yang akan lalu. Okay. So that is exposed to fluid. In this case, ah, if we are referring to the kidney tubule, okay. Alright, simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. You can see it is a single layer of cube or dice shaped structure of cell. Alright, it has large and spherical. Uh, bukannya central disc, bukannya bentuk disc, tapi dia bentuk bulat betul-betul. Okay, large spherical uh, central nuclei. And it is thicker than the simple squamous. Okay, so it can be seen um, like pentagon or hexagonal uh, shape from the surface. Okay. And it is found in the duct. Okay. Lining the duct, ductus, eh? ductus, ataupun lining of the glands. Example, the collecting duct. Bahasa Melayu, ductus pengumpul. Eh? Ductus pengumpul. 
or in the pancreatic duct or in the salivary gland, ductus ileo, right? Or it can be found also in glands, okay? Uh, in the salivary gland, in the mucous gland, sweat gland, and also thyroid gland. So the function is basically for secretion. Function yang pertama, secretion of hormone, for example, the thyroid gland, okay? Secret hormone and also saliva or secretion of hormone of saliva from the salivary gland. Sweat ke, secretion of sweat ke. Asalkan dia melibatkan brembesan. Right? And function number two is absorption. Right? For example, the reabsorption of molecule from the proximal tubule in the kidney. So, untuk penyerapan semula daripada proximal tubule kita dekat dalam kidney. So, proximal ni kat mana kita jumpa? Dekat kidney, which part of the kidney? Dekat nef? Nephron structure. Kan? Okay. Okay, that is simple cuboidal epithelial. So, ingat eh, simple squamous jumpa kat mana? Apa function dia? Now, simple cuboidal jumpa kat mana? What are the functions? Okay, right. Next, proceed with columnar. Okay, simple columnar epithelial tissue. You can see uh, simple columnar again. Simple is because of the layering. Composed of only one layer. Columnar is because of the shape. It is a column ataupun a brick uh, a sh shape structure, right? And it's divided into two, non-ciliated and also ciliated. So please be specific, right? Let's say keluar soalan exam, contohlah nanti kan? Dia bagi gambar macam ni. So you have to be specific. Tengok gambar dia. If you can see that it has a uh, bentuk yang macam, macam ni ni, uh, this is what I call as microvilli. So this is non-ciliated simple columnar epithelial. And if you can see cilia, so meaning it is ciliated simple columnar epithelium. Okay, right? So both of these uh, simple columnar epithelial is associated with goblet cell. Ni goblet cell. Ni semua goblet cell. Okay, so what is the function of these goblet cell? The goblet cell function to secret mucus. Okay, to secret mucus, right? Okay, so a uh, simple columnar epithelial, it is a single layer of rectangular or tall cell which have a uh, nuclei, either oval or round shape, and located near the base of the cell. So, tengok sini. The nucleus is located towards the basement membrane. Nampak tak? Nucleus dia bukan duduk dekat tengah-tengah cell macam ni. Ha? Bukan. Dia duduk dekat towards the basement membrane. So, ke arah bawah. Towards the base of the cell. Okay. And they have goblet cell. Right, that associated with microvilli or cilia. Okay, so microvilli purposely for increase the surface area, and cilia is helping uh, to sweat the mucus with ciliary action. Ah, uh, ciliary action tu macam mana, madam? Dia macam ni. Ah, uh, tu ciliary action. Okay, right. Okay, where can we find this uh, simple columnar epithelia? Remember, simple columnar epithelia ada dua, ciliated or non-ciliated. So, non-ciliated can be found in the intestine and also stomach, while ciliated can be found in the fallopian tube and also bronchioles. Okay, bronchioles. So, ciliated type. Okay, function. Right, since it has goblet cell, and you know the function of goblet cell is to secret mucus, makanya the function of simple columnar epithelial is for secretion. Okay, secretion of what? Secretion of mucus. If the mucus secreted in the stomach, it is to protect the stomach from um, acidic condition, right? And also if it is uh, secreted in the intestine, the function is to uh, protect the intestine from enzyme, to lubricate the passage of food in the intestine, okay? uh, to absorb 
digested food. Okay. And as for ciliated type, the function of ciliated epithelial is to propel mucus. Propels mean menggerakkan, meng, 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 propels, eh? macam menghantar mucus tu dengan kaedah ciliary action. Okay, propel mucus or reproductive cell by ciliary action. Okay, right. Any questions so far? No, madam. Okay, so now recap. Non-ciliated epithelial can be found in? Non-ciliated simple epithelial, simple columnar epithelial can be found in? Intestine and stomach. Yes, intestine. And also stomach. Okay, remember, non-ciliated can be found in intestine and stomach because dia tak ada cilia but dia ada microvilli. So the function is for? Function? Secretion of mucus. Secretion of mucus, lagi? Ah, bila ada secretion of mucus, so? Lubrication. Ah, it can lubricate so, ataupun it can protect our intestine and also stomach, okay? All right, okay, very good. Okay, that is non -ciliated. Okay, remember again, the characteristic of non ciliated epithelial, it is the cell are tall and quite narrow, have cyto, more cytoplasm because the nucleus is located towards the base, okay? And it has mucus secreting cell known as goblet cell, right? And the free surface has microvilli to increase the surface area for Absorption and secretion. Okay. Ni absorption tadi, absorption of apa? Absorption of foods ataupun nutrient from digested food. Okay. All right. Okay. So as for uh, location, we have discussed just now. It can be found in the stomach lining where the mucus from the goblet cell protect the stomach, uh, stomach lining, protect the stomach lining from acidic content, right? And also from enzyme. In the intestine lining, it also protect the digestive, uh, the, 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 the intestine from digestive enzyme and also lubricate passage of foods and absorb digested food. So you can see, they have three functions over here. Even though dekat dalam tadi ni ada dua kan. Lebih kurang kita nampak macam roughly it has two function. Is it? Uh, nampak macam dua. Nampak macam dua because we have two bullets over here. But then actually the function is three. Secretion, lubricates and also absorption here. When we are talking about the non-ciliated. Okay, simple columnar epithelium. Okay, right. Okay, right. So, um, next. So, whatever that Madam highlights, sebenarnya itu adalah penting. Maksudnya, apa-apa yang Madam highlight, highlight itu, itu keywords, right? That help you to understand. Okay. Okay, next. Ciliated simple columnar epithelial. Okay, where can we found this ciliated simple columnar epithelial? Bronchial. Ah, bronchial. And? Oviduct. Oviduct. Okay, good. So, they have cilia. So, this cilia helps to? Apa tadi? Propel the mucus. Yes, propel. 
propel mucus ataupun propel di um, uh, reproductive cell. Contoh, in the fallopian tube. You just imagine the structure of fallopian tube. So during ovulation, secondary oocyte will be released. So secondary oocyte will be released into the fallopian tube. So in the fallopian tube, the secondary oocyte will be travel along the fallopian tube. So macam ni dia boleh bergerak dalam fallopian tube. It is propelled by the cilia. That lining the oviduct. Okay? Right. Okay, characteristic. So, columna, it is having a shape of columna, but have cilia at the free surface. It also have a mucus secreting goblet cell that produce mucus, produce and secrete mucus. Okay. And then it helps the movement of mucus by ciliary action. So, the cilia swept the mucus. Okay. The function, sorry, the location, it can be found in the oviduct and it can be found in the lower respiratory passage. Remember, respiratory passage means salo pernafasan. Our respiratory passage divided into two, upper respiratory passage and lower respiratory passage. Upper respiratory passage ialah kita punya rongga hidung, kita punya pharynx, larynx, trachea. So those are upper respiratory passage. Okay? Lower respiratory passage, passage uh, dia dah masuk ke bronchus, bronchiole, alveoli. That is our lower respiratory passage. Okay? Right. Okay, so uh, the function is to move materials or to propel materials from one location to another location by ciliary action. Depends lah. Kalau oviduct, to propel reproductive cell. Kalau dekat, uh, apa nama, bronchiole, uh, to propel mucus in the respiratory passage. Okay? Okay, so that is all about simple epithelial. Okay, so far any question? Okay, that the next uh, proceed with stratified squamous. Okay, remember stratified means uh, epithelial uh, tissues or epithelial cells that uh, compose of multiple layers or multiple tiers. So we have stratified squamous stratified columna, stratified cuboidal, and the, the next one is transitional epithelia, right? Okay, what are characteristics of stratified squamous? We start with squamous first, all right? So it form tough layers, berlapis-lapis, right? The first form cells are cuboided, cuboid in shape. Maksudnya apa? This is basement membrane. So lapisan yang bawah ni, basically have a shape of cuboid. As it goes to the upper layer, makin naik ke atas, makin naik ke atas, the cell will become flattened. And remember, to identify what type of stratified epithelial is that, you have to look at the layer on the top ataupun the upper layers, the upper layer, right? Uh, so you can see the first form cell is cuboid. And then, uh, as the cell push towards the free surface, they become flattened and then call as squamous. Okay, the squamous eventually flakes off and replaced by the new ones from the beneath. So, in case the uppermost layer flakes off, or upon one off, so it will replace by the cell beneath it. Okay. So by by uh, understanding this statement, agak -agak, what is the function of stratified squamous? Agak -agak. Protection. For protection. Very good. So the function of stratified squamous basically A, involved with protection. Okay? Right. Uh, sorry, madam. Mm -mm. So kalau uh, yang lama punya mati tu yang the flakes off tu naik mm -hmm. atas kan bawah tu cuboid. So mm -hmm. dia can still squamous ke dia jadi cuboid. Okay, good question. Okay. So cell on the basement membrane ni will keep on mitosis. So dia, sel baru akan naik, sel baru akan naik. So yang yang tadi dekat bawah dia akan naik lagi atas. Dia akan jadi makin nipis. Naik, dia akan jadi nipis. Faham tak? Right? So the new cells actually develop from here. Dia mesti tak daripada sini. 
Okay, so makin naik ke atas, makin naik ke atas dia akan makin nipis. Macam itulah. Okay. Thank you, Madam. Okay, right. Okay, so you can see from here, the uppermost or the surface layer is flattened. Right? The inner or the deep layer is having cuboid shape. Okay, you can see. And this is what why we call it as stratified squamous. Okay, right. So stratified squamous uh, epithelial tissue can be found in the outer layer of skin, part of esophagus, right? And also lining of mouth. Sebab kita makan pun kadang kita makan benda yang uh, melukakan mulut kita, kita makan benda panas kadang-kadang kan, alright? So the layer will worn off lah. So it will be protected by the beneath layer. Okay, so the function, key function for stratified squamous is for protection okay all right so uh, stratified squamous composed of several layers that will regenerate rapidly the deep layer having either cuboidal or columnar shape and the free surface will be having squamous shape okay it can be found in the outer skin outer layer of the skin anus Kadang-kadang kita makan benda pedas ke, celik berit ke kan luka. Kita punya anus will be uh, injured. So, it will be replaced by the layers, the next layer. Okay. Vagina, lining of the mouth and also esophagus. So, these are the distribution where you can find the stratified squamous epithelia. Okay. Alright. And then the function, like I said, the function is for protection for underlying tissue that is very exposed to injuries or we call it as abrasion. The new cell will be replaced, the cell that will that will shed off. Okay. All right. So again, this is picture uh, under microscope, the stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Okay. All right. Next, we go to pseudo stratified columnar epithelial. Okay, remember, pseudo stratified is classified under simple epithelial okay right so what is the factor that cause it to seems to be or appear to be multiple tiers what is the factor or what cause it to be appear to be uh, having multiple tiers different length yes the cells are very or having different length setiap satu sel tu tak sama pai panjang okay right so we can see here, okay, very clear, right? Where you can see that all cell basically attached to the basement membrane. Semua cell melekat dekat basement membrane. It's just the fact that some cell are quite um, small uh, ataupun um, uh, short, okay? And some cell is quite uh, long, okay? Uh, so the cells are very in length. That's why... It seems like having multiple tiers. Okay. All right. And you can see, uh, usually, uh, pseudo stratified columnar epithelial is associated with goblet cell. Mesti ada goblet cell. Nah, Ini lah rupa goblet cell ni. Kalau nampak dia macam yang uh, kembung sikit ni, lepas tu dalam dia ada bulat-bulat. Okay. Uh, that is goblet cell. Okay, characteristics. Okay, the cells appear to be at different layers because not all cells reach the free surface because the cells are very in length. Okay, right. So, but all cells attached to the basement membrane. Okay, in terms of location, it can be found in the lining of upper respiratory passage. Upper respiratory passage, example, trachea. Okay, recap balik. Uh, what type of epithelial tissue that you can found in the lower respiratory tract tadi? Lower respiratory passage. What type of tissue? Cilid, epithelium. Simple or stratified? Stratified. 
stratify oh. sure simple ha simple okey simple column nah betul tak simple hmm. column nak epithelial tissue ciliated or non ciliated ciliated ah ciliated okey very good okey so don't get confused don't confuse between uh the the the, the, the epithelial tissue that found in the upper respiratory tract and also lower respiratory tract okey the function is for secretion. So mainly any tissue that have goblet cell, memang function there is for secretion. Okay. Right. And then the movement is by assisted by ciliary action because you can see in this picture, pseudo stratified columna usually have cilia. Okay. Right. Okay, all right. Next one, okay, or last one is transitional epithelial tissue. Okay, transitional epithelial tissue, transition. It comes from the word transition. It means this kind of tissue actually can change its shape depending on situation. That's why number there, transitional epithelial tissue. It can stretch and it can recoil. It is stretchable. In other words, it is stretchable depending on situation. Where can we found this transitional epithelial tissue? We can found it in urinary bladder. All right. In urethra. Okay. Or ureter. Okay. Kesimpulan dia ialah our urinary system. Dekat kita punya urinary system. Start with our, uh, apa nama? Ureter and then urinary bladder and then urethra. Okay, all right. So this cell, uh, I mean, these organs have uh, are lined by transitional epithelial tissue. Okay, so uh, what is the function? So the function of this transitional epithelial tissue is to permit distension. Permits distension. Permit distension means it can be stretched and it can be recoiled. Okay. So it can be stretched, for example, in our urinary bladder. Our urinary bladder can stretch whenever it is full with urine and it can recoil back to original shape as the, the, the urine has been emptied okay, from the bladder, right? And you can see in terms of shape, nampak tak shape dia? It is composed of multiple tiers, right? Uh, and then uh, this is what happened when the epithelial is stretched. You can see that the uppermost layer become a little bit flattened compared to the relaxed uh, condition. Okay? Okay. Uh, Okay, characteristic. So, um, uh, transitional epithelial is a modified stra stratified epithelial. It has three to four layers of similar size of cell, except at the free surface that become more flattened. Okay, and the free surface will not flex off. This is something different lah from a simple squamous, uh, sorry, stratified squamous epithelial tissue where transitional epithelial will not flex off. So, kalau dia flex off, Urine kita boleh escape bang, kan? All right. So the cell can change its shape under different condition. Okay. Okay. In terms of location, it can be found in urinary bladder, ureter, urethra, and also renal pelvis. Uh, nanti tambah dalam nota, ya. Eh? Urethra, renal, pelvis. Okay. And the function is to permit distension in urinary bladder. So you can see that it can change, the cell can change the shape from cuboidal to squamous when the wall of the bladder is stretched as it fills with urine okay so the thickness of the tissue prevent the urine from escaping to the surrounding tissue all right 
Okay. Okay, so finish with epithelial tissue. Any question? Sempat salin nota? Madam nak tanya. Uh -huh. uh, kalau macam tu, perut pun ada, perut pun ada ni ke? Uh, translational, transitional epithelium? Uh, tak, tak. Perut kita tak. Perut kita dia punya, dia ada muscle. Dia ada smooth muscle. Uh, so, dia bukan transitional yang boleh stretch and ni. Dia muscle tu. Muscle. Sebab kalau boleh stretch tu orang kata perut perut kita boleh mengembang tu kan. Itu bukan dia bukan mengembang sebab muscle dia tu. But I will tak apa nanti medium cari juga lagi. Ada uh, ada more detail explanation dia. Okay lagi soalan. Any other question? Uh, 